Hello. So we know that people use entheogens, psychedelics, to help with withdrawal or to help them stop certain substances. And Amanita is no exception. So a lot of the things that people use Amanita for, obviously what I used it for was to treat my anxiety and help treat the withdrawals of coming off of pharmaceuticals, namely benzodiazepines. But there are other pharmaceuticals people can use this mushroom to come off of. I'm not a doctor and I'm not going to talk about those. What I am going to talk about is how it can alleviate cravings for things that tend to be dopaminergic pushed, like addictions to nicotine, addictions to sugar, addiction to alcohol. And I believe that those things, we know that nicotine affects sugar, sugar affects sugar, alcohol affects sugar. So something is happening with this mushroom that I think is making sugar more bioavailable to the body, perhaps it is healing the receptors. I have another video on Amanita and cannabis and Amanita and psychosis. So those are two separate videos. So please go watch those. And I'm just going to make a brief statement about cannabis here, but um, and cannabis will downregulate GABA and downregulate glutamate and upregulate dopamine, which is why a lot of people use it because that dopamine can help them get over some of the anxiety, but also the CBD side, I think when you're, you're smoking it like that does calm the anxiety somewhat. But the issue with cannabis is that it will interrupt REM sleep and it can interrupt the receptors that are involved in learning and storing long-term memory. So there are a lot of people that do segue off of cannabis in favor of Amanita because it does all of the same things that cannabis does for them, including like silencing the noise and the thoughts and the intrusive thoughts or the AD thoughts, but it also is very good at calming anxiety. The only exception is if you were using cannabis for schizoaffective disorder, and I know a lot of people use it for that, there's some sketchiness there for using Amanita. If you have schizoaffective disorder, some people do fine with it. Some people, it makes it worse. And then some people that do have bipolar and have seriously big manic and depressive swings, coming off the cannabis alone can trigger psychosis. And then using Amanita in amounts higher than microdosing or longer than the protocol or even half the time of the protocol that I talk about can then push someone deeper into psychosis. So those are the only things to be careful with is on the, the cannabis side is what you were using cannabis for. You know what I mean? If you're coming off a lot of alcohol, like you need medical supervision. If you are actively drinking, like an alcoholic actively dependent on alcohol, I would ask you please to use caution and seek medical care for that because you can get the tremors and the shakes and all that stuff and it can trigger seizures. But it's true if you look at how they help treat you through those withdrawals are benzodiazepines, which Amanita muscaria plugs into those same receptors. And so I believe that is potentially why people find it real easy to stop drinking when they start using Amanita muscaria. But all of this stuff clearly is going to depend on you and your healthcare provider and what you were using things for and how much of those things you were using. I am not going to give you medical advice because I'm not a doctor. And in America, that's practicing medicine without a license. And I can't do that. But people use it to stop drinking. And indeed, when I talk to people and they say, you know, I love Amanita, blah, 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 is why I use it. A lot of people say alcohol, don't drink anymore. I can tell you, I wasn't drinking much when I found Amanita and was using Amanita. And after that, I almost couldn't stand any alcohol. And here I am five years later, and I can have like a quarter, maybe half of a beer before my body's like, no. And I like like a really good craft beer. I enjoy the taste. I, I want to have that. But the alcohol, just my body now with Amanita is just pretty intolerant of it. Some people have said that they are using Amanita to get off opiates. And I have another video about stacking Kratom and Amanita. That has to be done very carefully. There's a lot of caveats and please pay attention to this. So don't do it without watching that video, please. But yes, there are some people that are using just Amanita and say that it really helps deal with the withdrawals so that it makes it easier for them to come off of them for whatever reason 
that they are trying to get off of those. The sugar thing was harder for me. That was my drug of choice from childhood and like most Americans and you know, sugars and everything. But also I'm a neurodiverse brain and neurodiverse brains are extra, extra sugar hungry. I have found that even though I want to cut back on sugar, I still need it in some way and I try to eat fruit every day. So if your brain is extra hungry for sugar, it's not just that sugar triggers dopamine, like hungry, hungry brains need sugar. But then if your body isn't processing the sugar and because of drugs that you have taken, medication that you're on, sedentary lifestyle, uh, different illnesses that you've had and depression and mental illness, and you've gained weight or are perhaps headed toward the pre-diabetic or diabetic side, then you're also going to be dealing with that availability through insulin and your receptors. I don't know if Amanita is helping to heal those receptors in any way, but I can tell you that my blood sugar tests before Amanita and then my blood sugar tests after, I am no longer pre-diabetic. And the only thing different was Amanita. So maybe Amanita is healing those receptors or it's doing something that's doing something that's helping heal them. Maybe it was something else I did. I don't know. I'm just telling you how it has helped me. There's another thing about Amanita and that's smoking it. And I made these smoke blends that I put in my store and they're there for a reason. And I use the Sweet Dreams smoke blend that I made that I sell in my store. It is stacked synergistically. The things that are in it are there on purpose. And I will smoke that. And I used to be on government cigarettes. And this uh, and another blend that I'm going to tell you about helped me get off of those. So what I will do then in the evenings is I will hit a little bit of the Sweet Dreams blend. And then that will help me just calm down and sort of get into my evening. Give me a little bit of a bump. Give me some energy. But if I'm craving sugar and I have already, I know, given my brain the sugar it needs in my coffee, in honey, in fruit, and I don't know what I'm craving, I've just got this itchy brain craving, right? Then what I do is I use my addiction blend. And that has two things in it that help with those dopamine receptors and they just scratch that itch in the brain, whatever that thing is. I also use that same addiction blend when I feel like I'm craving nicotine or a cigarette or something because I do have tobacco that someone has grown and gave me as a gift and what I'll do is take a teeny tiny pinch of it and I'll mix it with the addiction blend and put it in my pipe. I wanted to put nicotine in the addiction blend in a very small amount, but you can't sell tobacco across state lines. Not American spirits, not, not government made tobacco, but hand grown. There are people that sell seeds and you can grow your own and there's ceremonial tobacco. But I'm talking like a teeny tiny little pinch of it in a bowl of my addiction blend. And between my Sweet Dreams blend and my addiction blend, I have gotten through every hurdle, every craving of all of the things that I used to be on. And I think it's because I'm using it in conjunction with Amanita muscaria. Either I'm on the microdosing protocol or I finished the microdosing protocol and I'm just using it when I feel like it, like a full muscimol or just ibotenic acid when I need to think, or I'm back on the protocol or I've just come back from a very large dose, high dose ceremony. Either way, I'm usually not very far from having recently used Amanita in some capacity. And I think with that support, the smoke blend just really comes in and saves the day when I'm craving something. And it doesn't take much, just one little bowl in my pipe. And I smoke that and I'm just, I'm good. But this is my use. And the things that I'm reporting to you about can get pretty dangerous and pretty sketchy as all of these things can. So please seek a doctor's help if you're going to be stopping something that's dangerous for you to stop. You know what I mean? But I'm telling you this so that you can find your own way through this and you know that Amanita might be a really helpful place to start. If you'll notice, there's no ads on this channel because YouTube demonetized it. Everything that's censored here and all of the Amanita education is on AmanitaDreamer.net and it's 100% free. I don't even ask you for your email address. Although, if you want to get the newsletter where I give away stuff, all of my lives and I'm going to go live, 
things that I'm doing in my community, new items that are showing up in my store. If I'm going to be doing book signings anywhere near you, speaking engagements, all that stuff. It's in the newsletter. It only goes out twice a month. So if you want to get that, you can get that at amityadreamer.net too. But if you want to help support everybody, all that free stuff, which is very expensive for all that bandwidth, then you can go to mushroomvoice.com. And that's where you can get the products or you can join our community. I love you, beautiful people.